To become one of the largest horse sales in the West, what does that take? But that is the job of a good manager. You have to be fair. Jan Parker, manager of the BLS Horse Sale in Billings, Montana, is my guest as we discuss how they handle the issues that can arise specifically when it comes to selling horses. How do they provide assurance to buyers? All people want is credibility and confidence in what they're going to buy. And we'll talk about what has made BLS an exceptional loose horse sale market and what's hot in the market. Today. We were draft cross before draft cross was cool. And finally, how have they adapted to changes over the years and what does the future look like in the horse sale business? At horse market, even through tough, tough times, the good horses have always sold good. It's the ins and the outs of the horse sale business on this episode of the Working Ranch Radio Show. And welcome to the Working Ranch Radio Show. I'm Justin Mills, your host, and we are glad to have you joining us on our program today. This is episode 124, so if you want to go back and listen, I would encourage you to do that. We had a great show last week. Brett Stewart with Global Agritrends joined us on our show as we were talking about the cattle market uh, just from a very long-term and global perspective, not only domestically, but also global industry numbers in general and how that really is showing some real positive positive signs for our cattle market for the coming years and up uh, and down the road as well. And so I encourage you to go back and listen to that show. On our program here today, Miss Jan Parker, she is the manager of the BLS Horse Sale in Billings, Montana, will be joining us on our program. Her and her late husband, Bill, uh, began managing that sale in September of 1998. So they are going on 25 years of managing that sale that's held on the fourth weekend of every month at Billings Livestock Commission. They're going to enjoy the conversation we have with Jan, uh, not only from her perspective of managing that horse sale and growing it to really a phenomenal sale that is uh, somewhat unique in in, in different ways. And you're going to hear about what those are. Uh, Specifically, one of the things, as I said, my opening, boy, they have a stellar loose uh, horse market. But beyond that, other things as well. And I'm excited to share my conversation with you today. Jan Parker, my guest today, manager of the BLS Horse Sale in Billings, Montana. Real quick, a thank you to our sponsors today of the Working Ranch Radio Show. All Flex, cattle identification and record keeping should be easy. And now you can tie your EID tag, your visual tag, and the genetic data to one management number with the All Flex match sets. To find out more, go to their website at allflexusa.com. Inherit Select from Zoetis, providing commercial cow-calf producers with genetic insight to make replacement female selection and breeding decisions. You can find out more at Inherit inheritprogress.com. The American Gelvy Association, a highly fertile, moderately framed cow that raises high-performing calves even in tough environments. Now that's doing more with less. The Gelvy cow's efficient use of resources make her the picture of sustainability in today's modern beef industry. Find out more at gelvy.org. And MLS Tubs, don't gamble with fly control this summer. MLS Tubs are a sure bet. All kinds of tubs for all kinds of needs. You can find out more more at MLSTubs.com. And finally, Tank Toad, your remote water monitoring systems, all from the convenience of your phone, powered by solar, satellite, and sail. If you want to keep an eye on your water supply, it's what we use here on the X-Ring Ranch. To find out more, give them a call, Metal Arc Solutions at 801-252-6135 or on the web at TankToad.com. Well, right now, let's check in with the Captain Tim O'Byrne, publisher and editor of Working Ranch Magazine for this week's edition of Tim's Two Cents. Hey, Justin. Hey, everybody out there in Working Ranch Radio Land. I know everybody's busy. Summer is in full swing, and it seems like it was like only a couple of weeks ago, it was like flat out calving in winter and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, time marches on, and um, Fourth of July is coming up here next week. I love it when you guys go to our Facebook Friday post. And this time we're going to ask you to uh, drop a photo of your ranch gate showing your patriotism. That's a very big thing for us here in the beef industry in the United States. Happy Fourth of July. Play safe, everybody out there. 
And back to you, Justin. All right. Thanks, Captain. And you know, absolutely. On behalf of all of us here at Working Ranch Radio Show and Working Ranch Magazine, we wish you and your family and friends the safest and best of Fourth of July week. And while we do celebrate our Independence Day one day out of the year, it is something each and every day we truly need to be thankful for of all of the sacrifices that have been made for our freedom. So we're thankful to those and we hope you all have a great Fourth of July week. Stay with us. Coming up next, Jan Parker steps in. She is the sale manager at the BLS Horse Sale in Billings, Montana, as we talk about how they've grown that sale over the last 25 years, the ins and outs of the horse sale business. Stay with us. We'll be back on the Working Ranch Radio Show after this. Every year you pick your replacement heifers. Some become profitable cows. Others disappoint. How can you make more reliable selections? Genetic testing. Commercial cow-calf producers like you are using Inherit Select from Zoetis. You gain valuable predictions, including cow fertility, size and soundness, feed efficiency, growth and carcass merit, as well as easy-to-use economic indexes. This improves your selection, breeding, and marketing decisions. Request a call from InheritProgress.com and ask about free TSUs to get you started. And welcome back to the Working Ranch Radio Show. Justin Mills here with you as we head now into our featured interview here today. A little bit different direction as uh, uh, it was a subject that came up a few weeks ago in a, in a meeting that we were having here with the folks at Working Ranch Magazine and uh, talking a little bit about the, the horse industry and, and the, uh, specifically more the horse sale type industry. And so my guest today is Jan Parker. She's the horse sale manager at Billings Livestock Commission. And Jan, thanks for joining us here today on the Working Ranch Radio Show. Thank you. Justin. I'm glad to be here. Well, Jan, uh, you and I have known each other for, for several years. I lived in Billings, of course, for, for many years. And uh, it was right after you uh, and your husband, Bill, took over the BLS horse sale. Um, you know, if we go back in the history of B, uh, the Billings Livestock Commission, it's been around for many, many years. But the horse sale side of it, uh, you said uh, recently when we talked that uh, you're heading into 25 years now of managing that horse sale. Yes, in 2023, we celebrate 25 years as managers of Billings Livestock Horse Sales. Our first sale was September of 1998. We had 40 horses in our catalog. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, yes. so 40 horses in the very first sale. You've done over 200. I think I was looking back. You've done over 280 sales. Very seldom have you canceled a sale, but there's been a few exceptions uh, due to more recently COVID. Right. We, yeah, it's big national things that'll slow down your sales. Uh, vesticular stomatitis set us out for two months. Back in about 2007, we had to sit out for EHV a month in May one year, and then we sat out a couple months during COVID. So other than that, rain, snow, or sunshine, I say that's my little slogan, good horses all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those are the, those are the three, um, I guess, issues that have uh, set us back, and we did not hold a horse sale. Yeah. Now, you said the very first sale, you had 40, 40 horses in that sale. What are we looking at now, the size and scope? And I know sometimes it varies uh, on the time of the year when you're in certain sales and certain times of the year uh, probably have more more of a volume of sale. But on average, kind of what are you looking at these days in, the, in terms of where we're at in scope and size of a BLS horse sale? So we just ho held one on Saturday. We had 556 head of horses. There were 200 of those that were in the catalog, the balance in the loose offering that day. So it, it's changed. I mean, through those 25 years, we built it, we built it, we built it. And then the horse industry changed, mm -hmm. you know, with the closing of domestic processing, um, that really changed uh, horse numbers. And today you're dealing with less horse numbers numbers and people wanting a better horse and you're back to 200 in your catalog versus a time when there might have been 650 horses over two days in a catalog at Billings. Mm -hmm. you, you touched on a couple things there and I, I want to get into that. The, the closing of the domestic processing, that was a change that happened during the time frame when you guys were managing the sale. Is that correct? Oh, yes. September of 2007. Okay. Yes. 
So I want to expand a little bit more on that because boy, that really, that really changed. I'm not just, not just in the Western market, but just in the horse market across the country. Right. And, you know, I had visited with a buyer years ago that told me in 1982, there were 12 horse processing plants within the United States. Well, when they finally closed, the last one to close was in Illinois. And that was the last one standing in that September 2007. And as a result of that, it just lessened the demand on a lower type horse. Mm -hmm. And it scrambled from that and has really recovered quite well because it's supply and demand. Now we don't have that supply because as a result of that, so many people, their horses weren't worth much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were selling babies for $50. Mm -hmm. And like, you don't think that that would ever happen, but it did, I watched it. And people sold off their mares, they sold off their studs, and then they no longer, you know, raise the horses. And, and that's why right now the, the supply were, were that many full crops back, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years of full crops were back and just less horses. So the horses that we have, I don't know that demand has increased. Demand has stayed steady. Demand for a better horse has increased, yeah. but overall demand, in my opinion, has stayed steady, but there's less horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing you talked a little bit about there, and this is very unique, I feel, uh, to the BLS uh, sale, and that is the loose horse market. That uh, You don't see the loose horse market in, in other areas of the country as substantial as what you see when we when you go to Billings. Let's talk about that element because I'll tell you what, um, what you guys get on loose horses is not normal across the country. How Why is it that different for you guys? Because we don't sell normal normal loose horses. How's that, Justin? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, like, I, I think that so much of what makes Billings Billings is the whole area that we live in. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed to live where people still make a living horseback, where there's so many dude ranches and there's so many outfitters and there's hunting and rodeo and roping and so many different kinds and types of horses so in our loose horses like saturday the top loose horse brought ten thousand, hmm. followed by 9500 9400 <laughs> 8800 8300 loose as mm -hmm. is where is how is so i mean they could be anything they mm -hmm. could be horses that can't go 20 miles into you know the bob marshall anymore um packing hunters mm -hmm. but they'll do great in iowa but those hunters or the outfitters, you know, know they won't work for their deal and they're busy. It's June. They're, they are taking out trail rides and uh, doing what they do. So they just put them in the loose and they still bring what they bring right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Same with ranches. You know, I mean, they're busy. I mean, they just got done branding. They're trying to, hey, it keeps raining. And so they're going to bring in anything that is a little bit sore, a little bit that's not going to, you know, fit their deal anymore. And they're just not going to mess with it and put it in loose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where that the top one uh, came off, you know, pretty big ranch around here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure he just couldn't cut it every day, every day, every day, you know? He doesn't have to do it anymore every day, every day. Yeah, because that's pretty unique. I mean, uh, there's not real well, there's really not any sales, horse sales in the country that have the loose market that you all have in Billings, for sure. Uh, let's talk about the current horse market. I was looking back through the the, the May results on that. Um, you know, in the, in the horse industry right now, you see the draft cross. That's kind of a big thing right now. Uh, let's talk about this current horse market. I look back in the May sale results on that, and your top selling horse was a Frisian cross mare with $36,000 went to Pennsylvania, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. So, yes, sir. So what are we seeing in the current horse market? What are you seeing? Okay, so like the draft cross thing at Billings, I, I got to steal George Jones's deal, but okay. we were draft cross before draft cross was cool. Yeah. And as a result of us being draft cross before draft cross is cool, we get really good draft crosses. Mm -hmm. We did years ago too. And, and what drives that is the dude ranches, the outfitters, the people in our area with a Canadian influence as well, big bone. 
good foot, mm -hmm. gentle minded, can let a 300 pound trail rider get on his back and not jump out from underneath him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they are by nature a gentler type of horse. So, yeah, um, we've, we've always been home of the draft cross before they were ever cool. Yeah. And, and now I think what we have at our fingertips with the marketing, like that horse is sold to Pennsylvania. Those people made it a vacation to come out here. They were here at the sale. And with the marketing, with being able to use social media, um, some print, you know, you reach further. And they see what you have and they think, hey, we'll go to Billings. It's always kind of been like that, though, mm -hmm. I have to say, that people would make it a destination to come. But just just like that couple, I believe they bought two horses, but they, they bought that Frisian. And, and this month, too, the, the second high selling horse brought 31000 mm -hmm. It was a black draft cross gelding. Yeah. And it went to California. Hmm. But you can come here and you can see more than one black draft cross, you know, like like that's also the secret about what makes it so good, because it's like with volume comes a wide selection. So so we have one for every budget and we have every kind and we offer two previews for you to view them and see them. And and I really want to say we were the first horse sale a general horse sale to include our consigners phone numbers in with the description of what they consigned. We want the people to call the consigner, ask the questions, get the extra video. Maybe they want to vet them. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a different level of good, but we want you to talk to that consigner and get your questions answered and feel good about what you're going to buy. Mm -hmm. Now, with the loose, that's not the case. The loose is as is, where is, how is, and yes, it's still strong. But in the case of those two draft crosses, I mean, I'm sure that people did their homework. Yeah. Well, it's always interesting to see the ebb and the flow of the, of the horse market and where it goes. And, and BLS horse sale sure has been a driver in the market across the country. My guest today is Jan Parker. She is the horse sale manager at Billings Livestock Commission's, their uh, monthly horse sale that they have. They've been going on uh, 25 years here this coming September. Stay with us when we come back we're going to continue we've got two more segments with jan we're going to talk a little bit about how things have changed over the years and how they've made adaptions to as you were as we were she was just mentioning some of the technology that's that's allowed uh, folks to preview these horses on a further little bit further extent than normal we're going to talk about that and just in general kind of the ins and outs of managing a horse sale stay with us we'll be back on the working ranch radio show after this A sustainable ranch is one that can do more with less. And for beef producers, it can start right at the herd level with a cow that's efficient with her resources and environment. And in today's modern industry, Gelby females are the picture of sustainability. Gelby and Balancer cattle are early maturing with maternal superiority through increased longevity, added fertility, and more pounds of calf wean per cow exposed. Adaptable versatile and sustainable all factors that have a positive impact on your bottom line gelby influenced females the smart reliable and profitable maternal choice for achieving sustainability in today's modern beef industry be sustainable breed gelby and we welcome you back here to the Working Ranch Radio Show. I'm Justin Mills. My guest today is Jan Parker. She is the horse sale manager at Billings Livestock Commission in Billings, Montana. As we were talking about in the first segment, they are going on celebrating 25 years of being in the horse, uh, having that, uh, managing that horse sale. And uh, just a little history real quick. You know, the Billings Livestock Commission was founded in 1934 as a horse and mule auction. And they're one of the oldest continuous livestock auctions in the West. And so that little bit of a background just on the Billings Livestock Commission in general. And as we talked about uh, just a bit ago, 1998 is when uh, uh, Jan began uh, began managing that sale. And, you know, um, uh, Jan, one of the things that I think is extraordinary about the Billings horse sale is that the fact that it has been running for 25 years. So many sales across the country kind of have a lifespan and they sort of peter out or fade off a little bit. And, and I feel confident in saying that much of that long running success is due to your management. I've known you for many years and what do you feel are the reasons that it continues to be a benchmark horse sale across the country? Well, thank you for that, Justin. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I think it goes back to the beginning of 
Bill and I. I mean, Bill, yes, he roped and he had a good eye for a horse and made the national finals and knew the difference between a so-so one and a good one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he had a passion for it. And I did too. We both like it. We both competed. I still compete. Um, in fact, I worked horses this morning um, at, at the place and I think I care and mm-hmm. Bill cared. Um, I want the sale right. I want people to have a good place to sell their horses and feel like, you know, we worked for them. And I want people to be able to buy something that I want to read about later. And they say, hey, I bought this horse at Billings. Mm -hmm. And it just, it makes me happy. And it it doesn't just make me happy today. It makes me happy every day. And, And it made me happy back in the day. Because prior to taking over management of this horse sale in 1998, Bill and I bought and sold horses. Mm -hmm. So we'd go to other horse sales all across the U.S., I'd say west of the Mississippi. And you'd see things that'd be like, gosh, if they just do this, you know, the results would be so much better. Or, you know, if they just had a wash rack out there where we could wash them when we got here Mm -hmm. or a covered barn or an indoor arena where we don't get rained on, snowed on, wind blowed on, just those kind of things. And then it was like, boom. We got to implement it. It didn't all happen overnight. I mean, it's been 25 years of building blocks. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the train was on the track, you know, when when Bill passed away. Mm -hmm. So it's just been my job to keep that train on the track. And I remember my first horse sale by myself. Mm -hmm. And I was driving out of my driveway and I thought, Jan, you just have Mm -hmm. to keep doing what you've always done. You have to be fair. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the people who are on one side of an issue don't think you're fair, but that is the job of a good manager. You have to be fair. And I try. Mm-hmm. And maybe I just had a really good upbringing because I try very hard to be fair. Mm-hmm. Well, I, and I, I'm guessing that the growth that you've seen and the reputation that the horse sale has just it, that's not doesn't happen, as you said, does not happen overnight. It was many years put into that and where it continues. You talked about folks that you deal with that, you know, on, on one side of the issue, or the other side of the issue. And, you know, I've been around enough auctions in my lifetime. I'm, you know, an auctioneer myself. And and in, and I think in the horse sale type element of it, things where you probably have to deal with a lot of different issues issues where you get some people that are maybe just a bit unhappy. So kind of two parts, to, <laughs> two parts to this question is, you know, how do you play defense? You talked about it a little bit ago, but uh, a bit, but how do you play defense on reducing the occurrences of those situations that are kind of tough to get through? Well, you know, honestly, Justin, <laughs> it's like if everybody would take responsibility for their actions and be 21, we wouldn't have so many problems, but people so want it to be somebody else's fault or problem. So you have to look at it and see, you know, what you see and how it all came down. But also from the very first horse sale, I, I do the previews myself. Okay. And I watch those horses and I already have a good idea what I see as a problem or isn't a problem as far as lameness, Mm -hmm. an issue, Um, you know, like this, this month I, I, we had two previews because the weather allowed us to preview here in our outdoor arena and you see a lot. So when maybe 48 hours later, somebody's blowing your phone up and it has to do with that. Well, you already know your answer because you saw it. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, my consigners, boy, ever since we have added this online portion, and I know we're going to talk about that, you know, they have really stepped up in calling out the blemishes that don't affect their soundness so that there are less surprises. This is why we have two previews. This is why we include people's phone numbers. This is why it's on Facebook and Instagram. Shop the horses. Because here's another one of my slogans. One person's good is not another person's good. Mm -hmm. What you expect out of a horse may not be what I expect out of a horse. That may be the best horse that man has ever ridden or or that gal's ever rode. That doesn't mean that's the best horse you've ever ridden. Mm-hmm. So you have got to do your homework. When you do your homework, you're way more successful. 
on both sides. When you do your homework as a consigner and you advertise them, you add different pictures, you share them on your Facebook page, you get them consigned to us early, that's doing your homework and doing a good job with your product. On the side of the buyer, you follow up with a phone call, you come to the horse sale. If you don't want to come to the horse sale, you have them send you videos. Maybe the horse is two hours from you and you can go see it and try it. Everybody needs to do their part in order to have success in the end. Mm -hmm. So the second part of my question of of this dealing with tough situations is, mm-hmm. and you mentioned it just a bit ago as you were talking about after Bill had passed away and and coming into that first sale after he had passed away. And but but how do you you Jan Parker <laughs> from a personal mm-hmm. and mental capacity handle some of this? Because I mean I was in you know oversaw a, a horse sale in Billings for a few years and had somebody people working underneath me that actually managed that. But at the same time, well I tell you what. That can be stressful. (laughs) And you do this, you do this month in, month out. I know. I told Bill, I said, you cannot let it make you old. I still (laughs) say that every day, Jan. Do not let it make you old, girlfriend. Um, I I don't know, Justin, because I really think I do the best job I can. I mean, I sleep good at night. I, I feel like I have done the industry my gut level best. And I've, I've been in 4-H. I was in 4-H all the years I could possibly be in 4-H. Mm-hmm. I showed horses. I ran barrels. My husband rodeoed. I show cutters. I've taken reining lessons. I mean, I, I mean, I have a pretty good grip on what's good and what's not. And <laughs> I feel that I, I do a good job representing them when people give me their information with enough time to do it. And when horses need to stick somewhere, I try to make them stick. Mm -hmm. When somebody's made a mistake on their own, it's not my consigner's fault. But sometimes it is. You just got to be fair. I mean, I don't know. I I go to bed good. How's that? (laughs) Well, I I think for a lot of people, they they look at this and there's a lot of there's a lot of facets to putting on a a sale. So when we look at all of these different aspects, is there something that from the outside looking in that most people don't really understand when it comes to managing a horse sale? What, What are some of those things that really from the outside looking in, many folks don't realize? That experience matters that, I mean, look, look how long it took me to come up with that. Like Mm -hmm. you weren't even finishing your sentence and I had it right. (laughs) Experience (laughs) matters. If you have horses to market, market them with professional people who are licensed, who are bonded, who do this. There is a horse sale cropping up on every corner. There is online horse sales cropping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. We are licensed. We are bonded. Most horse sales like Billings are. Do business with people that have experience who aren't going to call you up and say, well, that guy backed out on his bid. Sorry, we couldn't sell your horse. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh-uh-uh. Managers, um, it's your job to do your job and no excuses Mm -hmm. so like i think from the outside looking in maybe it looks easier i i don't know it's not i mean you know something i'm going to give you an example i had a horse that came from utah last month sold early in the sale big appaloosa a little gal buys it it's sore like two days later within our soundness time frame they bring it back the gal had just shot it, but the horse is sore. Mm-hmm. So I can't make that consigner keep the horse. And yet I felt, you know what? I can't make that little gal from Utah drive all the way back here and get her horse when I know that horse just got shot and you can tell that shoe's tight. It just needs to be pulled. Mm-hmm. So like as a manager, you go, well, I guess I could call that girl in Utah and make her drive the 10 hours back to Billings to pick up her horse and say, you know what? You shouldn't have shot it two days before the horse sale because this stuff happens, which is true. Mm-hmm. Or for the $6,000 that the horse cost, just take the horse back from the person that bought it, keep the horse, heal it up, get one of my guys to ride it back through and me take the, me take it on. Mm -hmm. And and, I mean, that's just makes the most sense, but I don't think people realize that that's really what good management does. I want that girl in Utah to come back. 
but I, but she's not going to come back if I make her drive 10 hours to come get a horse that the problem's obvious on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I think that there's a lot of um, things like that that people don't uh, understand. But that comes with experience. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, another thing, Jan, from a from a consumer side or buyer side of things, uh, folks that attend horse sales regularly, they, they may be a little bit more comfortable folks that don't go to horse sales on a regular basis. There's good reputations, there's bad reputations, but I think in all, there's just nervousness for folks. How have you overcome that element with folks? Well, I think if you do your homework, I mean, it's just like getting ready for a test. I mean, we can all be a little worried about the test, but if we prepare for the test, you're not quite as concerned, right? Mm-hmm. So, so what I tell people, like if they're if they are looking for whatever it is they're looking for, say they want a nice rope horse, okay, come to the previews. First of all, sit down, go through what's online two weeks before the horse sale, and start making phone calls. Make you a short list, and then when you come to the horse sale, or when you get the video from the people if you've requested it, mark off the ones that aren't going to work for you, mm-hmm. and. I don't think that there's anything that replaces being right here and looking at them because just like people, there's people that you meet that have charisma and you're like drawn to them Mm -hmm. and you get energy from them or they get energy from you. It's the same thing with a horse. I mean, there's some horses that are like, boom, I never even saw this horse. This horse was not in my short list and look at him. I mean, I've had people write me that saying, Mm -hmm. thank you, thank you for encouraging me to be present, to watch him, to see him, because I threw my list away and started a whole new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the confidence there to go to have seen mm -hmm, him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could see that being a huge, huge element. So my guest today is Jan Parker. She's the manager of the BLS Horse Sale in Billings, Montana. And when we come back, we've got one more segment with Jan. We're going to talk about how things have changed over the last 25 years, Specifically, we've seen a lot of technological changes that has brought some different elements into the whole concept of of selling horses uh, from previews to also just the physical sale going on and a little bit about their timed online only horse sale auction that they have as well in conjunction with their monthly horse sale. We're going to get into those issues when we return here on the Working Ranch Radio Show. Don't gamble with fly control this summer. MLS tubs are a sure bet. MLS high-performance, low-moisture cooked molasses tubs provide controlled, consistent supplement delivery to your cattle, horses, sheep, and goats. MLS takes pride in their line of products that are proven to lower your feed supplement costs. All kinds of tubs for all kinds of needs. Learn more about MLS tubs at MLSTubs.com. And welcome back to the Working Ranch Radio Show. I'm Justin Mills. My guest today is Jan Parker. She is the horse sale manager at Billings Livestock Commission, a sale that uh, this coming September will have been going on for 25 years that they have been managing that sale. And in that 25-year period, we've really seen a lot of uh, changes throughout the horse industry, the horse industry, the horse market in general. As we talked about in the first segment, it was 2007 when the the closing of the domestic processing took place, and we saw a big hit in the horse market and things have since that time have changed just a little bit one of those big changes Jan I can remember the very first time when I lived in Billings and I remember the very first time we sent a commercial through email okay I can remember when that happened all right so we go back to that time frame about the similar time it was 1999 when that first happened and when I was around that so 1998 to today technology has really brought a different element to, I mean, at the end of the day, we're still selling horses. All right. That's the, that's, that's not going to change, but technology has really had an impact. How have you seen that? And how have you guys evolved with that? You know, Justin, that that's really a good point because we just redid our website. And our website was done in 2001. (laughs) It was like, it really needed a redo. And I really love our new website. But also the website that we had worked good for everybody. I mean, I would have people say, don't change it. Don't change it. It's easy. I finally figured it out. But through those 20 some years, people have gotten better at it as well. And what really pushed people over was COVID when they were Mm -hmm. stuck at home and all these people that would tell me, oh, I can't run it. I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't. All of a sudden are like, 
no problem. I got this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, COVID was good for that. Um, the, The technology... Huh, we have gone from, I'm sure you can find interviews of me saying, I won't ever broadcast this thing online. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Uh-oh. It's true. Yeah. But to, okay, COVID. So we had a record-setting February horse sale in 2020. Wow. And in March, as a result of February breaking all these records, March is huge. We have 410 horses cataloged. And then we get COVID and we don't get to have 410 horses. So uh, Northern Livestock Video is also a part of Billings Livestock. And they said, hey, what if we change this program and we sell horses online, Mm -hmm. strictly online, timed online, timed meaning they go on one day and then they go off on another. Mm -hmm. So we did that first timed online sale was the first week of April and I had contacted some of my consigners out of those 410 horses and I said, hey guys, we're gonna try this. Do you wanna try it with us? I don't know if it'll be successful. I don't know if it'll fall on its face. I don't know if people will pay like they're supposed to and I need you to do good pictures, good videos, let's try it. Mm-hmm. We did. And we had 26 horses out of that 410 that I picked to be in that first uh, timed online sale, and it it was so well received, and we've done about eighteen of them since. Hmm. You know, just interspersed amongst um, you know our on premise sales, and then when we came back live in June, we added the internet buying portion to our live sales. So. When you consign your horse to Billings, you can choose whether you want it in the regular part of the horse sale or if you want it in the part where we turn on the internet and allow internet bidding on it as well. That's what we do with the on-premise sales. So you have this bank of bidders that you have approved through your timed on lines Mm -hmm. And then your regular horse sales, and they just broadcast it, and those people are able to bid on the horses right here in Billings as well. So that is really, I mean, there's your technology. Yeah. We have specific online only sales, and then we've also incorporated it as part of the on premise sale. Mm-hmm. So on those horses that do choose to be broadcast or on that part, they have a stiffer soundness guarantee on them. All blemishes that don't okay. affect their soundness need to be called, old wires, chewed off manes, cut off tails, anything that when your horse would get to California and you would go, oh my God, they never told me that horse's <laughs> tail was chewed off, <laughs> need to be, yeah. needs to be called in either the footnotes or verbally in the ring. So there you go. There's yeah. a long answer to that. It has changed well, a lot. As you were answering that, it just, it, it made me also realize is what, what some of the things that you're saying, I mean, you in advance, before you even went down that road of doing an online horse sale, you in advance already knew, okay, here's some issues we're going to, we, we could expect. So let's, let's just get ahead of it right now. That's what I felt was you were answering that. Some of those comments were like, okay, we're going to address these issues before they become an issue. And that's a, that's a big yes. deal. But, but I've learned that. Mm-hmm. And you know, being a, a licensed and bonded horse trader prior to taking over management of this horse sale, you learn that because all people want is credibility and confidence on what they're going to buy. So you have to convey that to people that might not be standing right in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you need a good video. You need a good, you need good pictures. You need to do a good job. You know what? Here's another one. First class effort gets first class results. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're playing basketball or selling horses. Yeah. And and as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm realizing that uh, in the time frame that you do have a lot of, of, of phrases that you use. And I, I enjoy that. That's what I enjoy about your conversations <laughs> with you because you've got a lot of different, different uh, sayings. And uh, I, I grew up in a family where my dad had lots of sayings. So I appreciate that. There was always a saying for something. So first class effort, uh, first class. First class results. There you go. I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do. I <laughs> yeah. mean, you just apply that and you win. Yeah. And yeah. then you don't come crying to the sale manager saying, well, you know, 
blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my goodness. Okay, well, there comes where you have to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, Facebook, uh, you know, that's part of the technology that's changed over the years. How have you guys adapted to that? And is there, I mean, now we're also seeing people selling off Facebook, you know, just specifically not using the sale uh, component uh, as far as a live auction sale. How is that uh, melded with, with your operation? Well, a couple things like, okay, I I, want to say this. I I visited with a lady this morning who called me to put in her foals this fall, draft crosses Mm -hmm. in this fall in one of the sales and said, I can't sell them from home. We got took on an online deal. Yeah. And like, like that is why it matters. Mm -hmm. Experience matters. License and bonding matters. Don't just go winging them on Facebook and expect everything to turn out okay. Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. But to use Facebook, I'm going to back up to when it first kind of came on. I remember I was contacted by a representative about advertising on there or or taking um, some tutorials. And the deal was it it cost $2,000. And I remember asking Bill, I said, hey, this Facebook thing, I get tutored, I think it was once a week for a month. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's 2,000 bucks. But I said, I think, I think we should do it. And he's like, Dan, if you think so, do it. But 2000 bucks even today is a lot of money. But $2,000 back then was a lot of money, but you could feel that that was coming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Facebook's really important to me. We have like 165,000 followers on there. Um, It reaches a lot of people. And that's why it's important to have good video, good pictures and um, we use it. We it's it's a big, big part of advertising and reaching people. But as far as going on there and selling one by itself, I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Well, and by all accounts, legally, they can't. <laughs> if, you, if you're playing, to, if right? you're yeah, you're not supposed to, according to But that, as we all know, that's it's a it happens every day. We all sell stuff on, you know, stuff online, mm-hmm, on, you know, mm-hmm, it's, but mm-hmm. neither here nor there. But on that. Um, so we got just a, a minute or so left here, Jan, as we kind of tail out just a little bit, um, we talked a little bit about the, the mart, the current horse market now, but as you look ahead in the future of the horse industry and the horse market and, and, and the sale business like that you're managing there, what do you see? I mean, let's, let's move out 25 years from now and what, what are we going to see as far as, uh, the horse sale business? Wow. I don't know that I have that crystal ball to go 25 years. I, I know that COVID taught us that life is short, that if you want to do something, you probably should. And you're seeing that with people like, I'm going to buy the horse. I want to go trail ride. I want to go barrel race. I'm going to rope or whatever it is, you know. And you see that. You also see a really strong stock market. I think when that stock market goes a different direction, maybe some of the extra money will change. Mm-hmm. But I think that horse market, even through tough, tough times, the good horses have always sold good. There just aren't as many as there is yeah. demand for a good horse. And every day there's less people making a good horse. Mm-hmm. So there's your answer. Yeah. I don't know what 25 years. Yeah, brings. I know. And it's, it, you're right. I mean, there's, we, we just don't, you know, we're just not using horses as much. I mean, we still use horses on our ranch, but compared to what horses were, you know, 40, 50 years ago, uh, you know, definitely we don't see the industry using them quite as much. Um, for you as a, as a, as an industry, your own, within your own horse selling industry, what are you looking at? Uh, to give you an idea of, okay, we're, we're, we're going to see strength in this market. I mean, you talked a little bit already about supply and demand, but beyond that, and you talked a bit about the stock market, seeing uh, the economy. I mean, it's just, are you just gauging like, like okay, we've got a strong economy. I think that our, our horse market's going to stay strong or what all are you watching? Well, well, I see it in the discipline that I compete in. I'm a cutter. Yeah. And once upon a time, you could buy a pretty good horse for a pretty fair price. Well, to, to be really competitive, to buy the horse that's going to pack you now, mm-hmm. my goodness, it's just up, 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 up. 
there's less horses, there's less people training them, but more people wanting to go. You see it with roping. So what's really changed it in the last two years are these rope horse fraternities. Yeah. So there's there's a couple big ones of those and rope horses and ranch horses brought us to town. So I keep my eyes on that very closely. Mm -hmm. um, they're a big deal. And they have really pushed a younger horse, uh, uh, say a two, three, four year old, um, made them be more in demand than they ever have if they are paid or are eligible for those fraternities. Yeah. Yeah. The fatur the, the whole element of fraternities and, and just isolated types, uh, uh, disciplines, I should say, having kind of their own deal has really driven some of that. Jan, I, I appreciate you joining us here today, uh, talking a lot about this as we head out, just some final comments from you. Well, I look for the horse market to be good. I invite everybody to come to Billings, Montana. Come see Montana. Mm -hmm. You can fly in here. We have holding, hauling, and insurance available on your purchases. We have a monthly catalog horse sale as well as those timed online events. Our next one is August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. You can see it all both horses and cattle at billingslivestock.com. Come see us in Billings. Cowboys live here. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Jan, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I know you just finished up a sale last week. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with us here on the Working Ranch Radio Show. Thank you, Justin. Thank you very much. You bet. And again, my guest today, Miss Jan Parker. Uh, always enjoy visiting with her and, and some of her, her outlook, not only in how she manages the sale, but also her outlook on how she manages life in general. And some of the witty sayings that she we were talking about here today, uh, not only do they apply to what she's doing from the horse sale management side of business, but also life in general. And I've always appreciated about that with her uh, and her, her take and look on life just in general. You know, one of the things as her and I were wrapping up uh, our conversation is she wanted to make it very clear that, uh, yeah, while the horse sale, she has been the horse part of that horse sale management team with her and her uh, husband, Bill, that passed away in 2016, it takes a village to put a horse sale together. And she put, sends out special thanks to, you know, Ty Thompson has been an auctioneer at that sale ever since it started. Uh, her office manager, Paula Harris, and many of the crew that are just part of all of that. That, uh, the outside crew that make this all happen on a monthly basis. She wants to make sure people are very aware that it takes a lot of folks to put that on, and she is extremely thankful to those folks as well. Again, if you want to find out more about the Billings Livestock Commission horse sale, you can go to their website at billingslivestock.com. Their monthly sale is the fourth weekend of every month, and as she was also mentioning, they do also have their BLS timed online horse sales. You can find out more information by going to their website. Well, stay with us. Meteorologist Don Day steps in, joins us next as we take a look at our long-term weather. We'll be back on the Working Ranch Radio Show after this. Do you have a young child, grandchild, niece, or nephew that loves the weather and wants to learn more? Day Weather has produced a children's weather journal full of weather facts, fun weather experiments, coloring pages, and pages to record weather observations for every season of the year. The weather journal is for ages 3 to 7 and designed to be fun and educational. The interactive weather projects are fun for the whole family to take part in. For only $10, the Day Weather Weather Journal is a great gift idea for any occasion. Click on our Amazon link to order at dayweather.com. And welcome back to the Working Ranch Radio Show. Justin Mills here with you as we head now into our weather brought to you today by Allflex. Cattle identification and record keeping should be easy. And now you can tie your visual tag, your EID tag, and your genetic data to one management number with the Allflex match sets. If you want to find out more, you can head to their website at allflexusa.com. And joining us now, as he does each and every week, is meteorologist Don Day. And Don, uh, we are headed into the month of July. Uh, one of the things I had noticed in a show you'd had last week is we're heading into about month six for some of the states in more of the western half of the U.S. on abnormally or no lower than average cooler weather. And that's got to really be indications of, of the moisture we've seen too. Yeah, it is. Because when you have a wet ground, that moisture evaporating back into the air kind of acts like a little bit of an air conditioner. And so that's kept temperatures in many areas of the far west and the Great Basin and parts of the Rockies with below average temperatures really since January 1st. In fact, 
you know, we had 291 straight days in Las Vegas where it hasn't even gotten to 100 degrees. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's Las Vegas. So that that is quite the uh, contrast to all of the news you're hearing about the heat down in the Mm -hmm. south yeah and that the heat down in texas boy it has been tough but you said some relief could be coming yeah what we're gonna see it's gonna be a bit it's gonna take a while another week probably uh where the high pressure ridge in the southern plains and the great uh, areas along the gulf coast there will start to migrate more to the west and what that will do is open the wind flow aloft to change down in the south now It is not going to be a significant or huge cool down, but it is going to be able to take a little bit of the edge off the heat, have a little bit more in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity as well, and that will help. So I do see some relief coming from the extreme heat in the south. And also the pattern change with the high pressure shifting around a little bit is also going to be more favorable now to bring some much needed rain to parts of the Corn Belt. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of, as we forecast a look ahead for the month of July in general, what are you just let's let's kind of work through from west to east what are you seeing just from a very uh high level look forecast long-term forecast for the month of july well for the far west i do think it is going to be warmer in july relative to where we've seen over the last six months i don't see anything that's going to be record-breaking but we will see it get warmer in california the pacific northwest the great basin and the rockies Uh, We should avoid anything that's prolonged or or too hot, but warmer than it's been. So finally getting into some summer temperatures in that part of the country. Mm -hmm. Also, I do see, you know, maybe a little bit warmer than normal in the northern plains through the Corn Belt. So the eastern side of the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, into eastern Nebraska, Iowa, parts of the Corn Belt there. I do see temperatures a bit elevated Mm -hmm. uh, in the month of July, but you know, we've had this heat dome down in Texas and parts of the Southern Plains, and we'll see that heat at times, but I don't see anything that would match up with historical heat waves of the past. Okay. All right. Well, gives us an idea of what we're going to see. It's, uh, as I, I remember saying this about a month ago, it's hard to believe we're heading into June. And I say it once again, it's hard to believe we're heading into July. Yeah, the year's half over. Chew on that. <laughs> well, yeah, we can, we can watch all the Christmas movies on Hallmark here in, when they do Christmas in July. <laughs> can't can't wait can't wait yeah just holding back for that one you bet all right don thanks for a look at our long-term weather thank you you bet and again meteorologist don day joining us as he does each and every week with a look at our long-term weather you can find out more about him at his website dayweather.com and from there there's also that link that you can go in to watch his daily video podcast that is on youtube our weather today brought to you by all flex to find out more go to their website at allflexusa.com stay with us we'll put a wrap on this week's show when we return on the working ranch radio show Before we head out here today, I'd mentioned earlier in the program about last week's show with Brett Stewart of Global Agritrends. We were talking about the global beef market really from a long-term perspective for the next several years. I encourage you to go back and listen to that. But one of the things we really do try to do is have on our show uh, items and topics or issues that really don't have a time frame on them specifically so that no matter when you listen to them, they have relevance. So if you want to check that out, you can go to any podcast provider out there or also our podcast site at workingranchradio.com. Now, the summer issue of Working Ranch Magazine is already out. If you don't have it, you can get your subscription started by going to workingranchmag.com. But one of the segments that I always enjoy reading is New on the Range. And just to kind of give you a highlight here, how about some bovine equine antihistamine? Also, uh, wrap twine remover. If you want to know what that is all about, go to page 18 of the summer issue of Working Ranch Magazine. The Working Ranch Radio Show is a production of Working Ranch Magazine branded number one by America's Ranchers. If you'd like to get a hold of me, my email address is justin.workingranch at gmail.com. Join us right here, same place next week or on your podcast provider. I'm your host, Justin Mills. And until next time, keep your chin down and your mind in the middle. So long.